Ready, sign. Would you call the row, please? Call the roll, please. Robert Krause. Present. Jason Blair. Here. Kathy Griffith. Here. <clears throat> Terry Kavner. Here. David Roberts. Here. Janie Milam. Here. Glenn Lewis. Here. Would you please stand and join me for the flag salute? see on the agenda is a proclamation declaring April 8th through the 14th, 2012 as National Public Safety. And I'll read this. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, and emergency medical services, and whereas an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property, and whereas the safety of our police officers and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from the citizens who telephone the emergency communication center in the city of Moore, and whereas the public safety dispatchers are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services, and whereas public safety dispatchers are the single vital link for our police officers and firefighters by monitoring that, their activities by radio, providing them information, ensuring their safety, and whereas the public safety dispatchers, more emergency management and communications department have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, the excuse me, suppression of fires and treatment of patients, and whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job in the past year, now therefore I, Glenn Lewis, mayor of the city of Moore, do hereby proclaim April 8th through the 14th, 2012, as National Public Safety Telecommunications Week in the city of Moore in honor of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our city and citizens safe. Thank you. Mayor and Council, in case you haven't met her, I'd like at this time to introduce Virginia Guild. She is our 911 supervisor. All right. Sorry if I'm a little slow. I was doing some of that supervising and ensuring last night. <clears throat> haven't had much sleep since <laughs> so but we are very proud to uh, serve the city of Moore and we hope that at some point or another so you will all come and visit us in the dispatch center so you can see exactly how we're working and we are looking forward to our new facility good we are too <laughs> thanks for the job you do appreciate it and I'll give you this Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Item number two is the consent docket. <clears throat> Item A is approve the minutes of the regular city council meeting held March 19th, 2012. Item B is receive the minutes of the regular planning commission meeting held February 14th, 2012. 
Item C is approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2011-2012 in the amount of $1,699,202.95. Make a motion to approve. All right, thank you. Second. Thank you. Everybody get their claims questions answered. Any notes or changes to the minutes? If not, we have a motion and a second. No other discussion, would you call the vote, please? Jason Blair? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Terry Kavner? Yes. David Roberts? Yes. Janie Milam? Yes. Robert Krauss? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. <coughs> Item number three is consider Moore Vision 2020 Comprehensive Plan Amendment number 31 located in the southwest quarter of section 14, township 10 north, range 3 west, being south of Main Street and west of I-35 from low dens density residential outside I-35 corridor to light commercial and medium commercial inside I-35 corridor. Application by Oklahoma Land Company, uh, Ralph Tyler. Planning Commission recommended approval of this item 6-0. Mayor and Council, <clears throat> items number three and four on your agenda are companion items. Uh, the two subject property parcels are located along the I-35 service road, just north and south of Main Street. Uh, parcel one is currently vacant. Parcel two is developed with a non-conforming billboard sign. Uh, the applicant has no proposed use for parcel one. However, he will be applying to ODOT for an upgrade to the existing billboard sign on parcel two, and that will include an LED changeable sign face. Uh, in order to do so, the lot must be in compliance with the cur current zoning code. And I would refer you to map 71, uh, to page 71 for a map, um, so you can see the parcel one and two. Uh, parcel one does have access to sanitary sewer only. Uh, there is no water currently available to serve this lot. Uh, parcel two does have access to sanitary sewer and water, however, uh, the use of a billboard does not require the use of water or sewer service. Access is provided by the southbound I-35 service road, Main Street and Classen Avenue, and there is no floodplain located on the property. Uh, the properties are currently designated in the Moore Vision 2020 as low density residential because C2 and C3 uses are considered to be light and medium commercial in nature. An amendment to the Moore Vision 2020 is required. The land use of parcel one and the electric condition in general was considered uh, in detail in the development of the Moore Vision 2020. At that time, it was decided that the electric addition, although it was adjacent to I-35, had no commercial encroachments at that time and that the housing stock was quality to uh, sustain continued residential use. That would be an asset to the city. Uh, so that's a general explanation as to why both these parcels are designated as low density residential. Uh, the applicant contends, however, that the subject parcels are not necessarily suitable for residential development being located in such close proximity to I-35 uh, and because of their unusual uh, shapes and size. Uh, however, concerns have been raised about the negative uh, effects of the commercial development in the electric addition, and this does include um, issues of light trespass from the LED billboard sign and any other commercial uses that might, uh, that might be located on parcel one. Another concern is the creation of a transitional neighborhood where commercialization creeps into the interior of a neighborhood and the quality housing is turned over to commercial uses. Uh, the planning commission, planning commission considered these items on March 13th. Uh, they did recognize the importance in preserving the electric addition uh, as a residential addition. Uh, however, that they did consider the LED billboard sign as appropriate uh, because of its existing use as a billboard sign. Uh, like <clears throat> the light commercial use for parcel one, although not ideal, um, the planning commission did determine that could, that could coexist with residential uses through buffering. Uh, what was discussed was a 25 foot landscape buffer on the west and south side of parcel one, and I do have a map of that on page 75 of your council packet. Uh, the reason that Planning Commission did determine uh, that parcel one uh, uh, could be utilized as light commercial uh, was because it is a vacant piece of land. It's located along the interstate, 
Uh, it was never developed as a residential lot. Uh, this should not be considered uh, as the Planning Commission wishes as a carte blanche for commercial transition of this neighborhood. Um, this is a very specific request and a very specific site, uh, but they do recommend approval of both items uh, three and four uh, contingent upon uh, the applicant uh, issuing a landscape easement as a buffer on parcel one, which is south of Main Street. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Was it staff's recommend, excuse me, was it staff's recommendation to approve this appointment to the planning commission? Um, staff recommended uh, to research the item carefully. Uh, we did provide in the packet some information that was collected by the applicant on LED signs. Um, as far as the light trespass that is generated or possibly generated, um, but we did request the Planning Commission, ultimately City Council, um, look at this, look at this issue and and make a determination based on the best facts you have. Okay. It, basically, both tracks that we're talking about are not usable for any other purpose. Uh, they they're just you know, quite quite frankly they're junk pieces. Years there has been a billboard on that one parcel that's north of Main Street, and uh, it's so old that uh, it's in need of repair and so forth. And uh, we, I think the applicant just simply wants to upgrade what's there, and uh, but uh, he may want to address this. We have a couple people signed up uh, to speak. Craig Fain. You can you, uh, go ahead if you would state your name and address for the record. Chris so that my boy, Southwest Second. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm opposed to it. Um, the the properties. It's it's never maintained, and the city of Moore has been mowing it for for a couple years anyway. Um, I know that we missed the planning commission meeting. Um, it was my fault why I missed it, but. The day of the meeting, um, or the day before the meeting, the city of Moore was over there mowing that lot. I went over and said something to him. Hey, why are you on mowing this lot? It's, you know, it's private property. Anyway, um, Ralph sent his crew out the next day, and and they took care of it. But if you drive by there right now, I mean, it's it's this tall, and an LED billboard. I think is it's great in an industrial area. A residential neighborhood I, I'm, I just don't think that I think there's other places for an, L, an LED billboard up and down I-35 on the south end of Moore on the north end of Moore but not right in the middle of Moore but that's all I have okay all right thank you uh, Robin thank you would please state your name and address for the record so we can have that later. Okay, my name's Robin Fain and I'm at, I live at 510 West Main. I live about 100 feet from that billboard. So um, I know y'all are talking about, you know, maybe you need to upgrade and, and that kind of thing for that billboard, but I mean, I'm 100 feet from it, right in front of it. I mean, I'm. it's gonna be like, I mean, it is definitely gonna, um, it's going to be bright in, my, in at my house, and I just don't feel like that's a place for an LED billboard. I think that we should put something like that more in the commercial area. I, I like I'm the fourth generation living on Main, Main Street, and um, it. I just want to preserve that as the old town of Moore, and not get so wrapped up into. The city and the, and the expansion that we don't take care of our old neighborhood because that neighborhood we have potential on that street we have young people starting to come in and fix up the houses my house is very well maintained there but um, anyway I, I, I've been told that I'm not going to notice the light and I'm just you know 
I just don't think that I'm not going to notice a uh, that size of billboard 100 feet right in front of my house. So, um, my other thing is is just that that property's never been maintained very well in the first place. So, um, who's going to maintain the new? Um, on the south side, they're talking about putting in some kind of something over there. Who's going to maintain that? The city or um, the property owner? Who's going to maintain be that? The property owner. The property owner. So that would be Ralph Tyler. They will yes. be maintaining that. So, and can y'all tell me why the city of Moore has been maintaining both sides of the property there, either side? Sure. When the, the, um, the owner doesn't maintain the property, we send code enforcement out to mow it, mm -hmm. and we put it on the tax lien. Okay. So that's what normally happens. Okay, so I they haven't I been... Don't, I don't know on that particular piece of property, but that's what we do. We have a, a mowing crew that goes around any residential or commercial property that doesn't, is not maintained. We actually pay someone to go out and do that and take care of it. And like I said, we send them a bill, and if they don't pay it, then we attach a lien to their property. Okay, well then, then we're gonna take the deal of um, he, he's gonna do some landscaping over there for us even though either side has not been taken care of? The way that will work, that tract on the south side of Main Street, even when that's ever developed, there will be a platted landscape easement and that will have to be a part of whatever's proposed, which I don't, Conversations I've had with Mr. Tyler, I don't think he has any plans for that tract on the south side of Main Street. But the reason that's in there is to protect that neighborhood, the electric condition that you live in, mm -hmm. to give them a buffer, even when that was ever developed. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's big enough to develop, I, personally. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that it's big enough to develop either. And then we had issues there. A gentleman bought that property in Portis Lab and was advertising on weekends. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not what we wanted to see happen mm -hmm. there. So that was placed, that was a requirement from the city. Elizabeth put that in as part of the approval, is a landscape buffer for those residential homes to the south and west. I mean, I, I would love that. Anything to improve the area that I live in, I would love that. But um, I just want to make sure that, you know, if, who, who is going to be taking care of that area? Is it really going to be done? There's going to... I mean, there's, there's a lot to consider with, um, you know, I mean, to consider the residents, the old time, the, uh, my, we've owned that house since the 50s. There's people, other people on the block, but there's some grandchildren that have um, inherited the homes or are starting to fix up. I mean, let's just not neglect that area if we're trying to preserve some of our historic uh, areas and more. Let's, you know, let's not let, you know, not at LED, billboard in front of all of our houses is, is not going to help our property. I mean, and it's, it's going to be uh, intrusive to, to me personally and, and I know the neighbors right around right around me, so I hate to be run out of my house. Sure. Thank you very much. That's really about all I have to say. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Mr. Drake, what kind of billboard is over there right now? I'm trying to think of it. I can't think of what's it's, up there. It was initially put up by First National Bank here at Main and Broadway years ago and then I assume Mr. Tyler bought it at some point and now it's just it's as large a billboard as allowed by our regulations I don't know the exact dimensions do you Elizabeth yeah. it's a large billboard one of those real big ones you see from the interstate I guess right okay. and it's yes. it's been there okay, for probably 25 years okay. yeah it so it's adjacent to the interstate down there okay, oh, okay. <coughs> That, was there anybody else signed up? There's or? no one else signed up. Anybody else want to speak on this issue? I make a motion that we approve item three. Okay. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? How about a motion to table? I would like to see. I'm thinking I'd, the same thing. I would like to see it <coughs> at night, what it looks like now and what it looks like uh, just south, down in the south part where they just installed two of those things, what it looks like at night. I don't, I have no idea. Most of your light on an LED is going to be in front, not behind, I think. Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, 
I don't know. I've never, so, I've never looked at one. I, it's about I don't close. see it uh, uh, flowing backwards into the neighborhood there. Yeah. And uh, it would certainly look as well, if not better, than what's presently there. Uh, but uh, if uh, you provide a better comfort level for everybody, why I wouldn't be adverse to favor. Do we have any other similar LED? Uh, Signs in town? Oh, there's several around. Yeah. They're the there's same size. Elizabeth, where the, where's the best one that we get? Dark and I go by some evening and look and just kind of see how it lights up the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, well, they are in several different locations. Right. Probably the one that I think of first. Um, Home Creations off of Broadway. Okay. North Broadway has just put one up. They're actually using that as their accessory sign not a billboard sign but it looks just like a billboard sign it's basically the same size it's as what's it is okay. it is uh, going to be very close to the same size right. um, and that is led especially <clears throat> when you're going from the south to the north it's changing um, and that'll give you a good indication as to what you can expect there are also two signs on the south one going yeah. on i-35 one going south and then another one as you're coming from the south we're down there by Abuelos, I guess, or? Yeah, I, I know it puts out a, a, a lot of illumination on the front, but I've never paid attention on the back side. I, I don't think I know what it does. Was, wasn't there a discussion at Planning Commission about the light pollution, Elizabeth? Um, there was, and there was a um, report that was included in your council mm -hmm. packet. Uh, it was provided by the applicant. Right. Um, but quite frankly, we don't have any um, experience with LED brightness and foot candles and, and things to do with light trespass. So after reviewing this report provided by the applicant, I do feel like it was informative. Uh, you can make your own decision as to whether or not it really will do the light trespass. But. Well, I know for me personally, I right now I'd probably vote no on it just because I don't want neighbors to have the brightness of the sun in their, their house at night. Yeah. And if I we go by and take a look at it by night. I understand that fully. Uh, but, uh, and maybe we can uh, further study the document on the light trespass mm -hmm. issue. And yeah, I'd like to do that. But uh, the, the other part of it, that property, uh, and Mr. Tyler's, I think, a fairly recent purchaser of that property, but it's, it, it's uh, been poorly maintained for years, in particular that south portion. Okay. Do we have a tabling motion? Make a motion to table this item. All right. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Uh, would you call for the table and vote, please? Kathy Griffith. Yes. <coughs> Terry Kavner. Yes. David Roberts. Yes. Janie Milo. Yes. Robert Prowse. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. Thank you. Item is table. Item Sorry, number four. Sorry, just to clarify, was that for two weeks? Yeah. Uh, okay. I just, I, I just want to go see it. And uh, I don't want to, I'm, I'm like everybody else here, I don't want to force something on somebody that's already living in the neighborhood. I wouldn't want that thing shining in my yard either. Great. So yeah. I want to. For you citizens that are here for this item, it will should be back on in two weeks. Two weeks. April. So if you guys want to come back and speak again. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Thank you for coming. Item number four is a companion item. You'll have a table of motion. Make for a motion to table item four. <clears throat> Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? Well, there's no discussion. Would you call for the vote, please? Terry Kavner? Yes. David Roberts? Yes. Janie Milo? Yes. Robert Krause? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Glenn Lewis? <coughs> yes. Item is table. Thank you very much. Item number five is considered the final plat for Royal Rock, Section 4, located in the southeast quarter of Section 22, Township 10 North, Range 3 West, being north of Southwest 19th Street and west of Telephone Road, Application by Rural Park Business Development, LLC, Randy Valancourt, Planning Commission recommended approval of this item 6-0. This is in Ward 3. Mayor and Council, this final plot consists of five commercial lots on 16 acres. This section of the Royal Rock Edition is located south of Southwest 17th Street and north of the existing commercial development that is uh, taking place along Southwest 19th Street. It does take in the property that is developed as the Royal Park Moore Mobile Home Park, uh, which is just north of the commercial area on 19th Street. Uh, the applicant vacated the public easements and right-of-ways through District uh, Cleveland County District Court in 2008 uh, to make way for this development. 
and the applicant will be relocating 23 mobile homes from the site to other areas within the mobile home park. Uh, water and sanitary sewer are available and will be extended through the site. There is a FEMA 100-year floodplain located on the eastern portion of the plat and detention will be provided. Access is pro proposed from both uh, Southwest 17th Street and Max Morgan Boulevard that will be extended north to tie in to Southwest uh, 17th Street and this will be done as a collector road. I should note that this is a critical project that was identified in an overall tra traffic impact study for the 19th Street Telephone Road intersection. Um, this will allow for an alternative route around the intersection uh, that will ease traffic congestion. Additionally, cross access easements should be provided within the addition uh, to access lot four within the development. Uh, staff recommends approval of the final plot. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, do we have a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve. All right, thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Anybody <coughs> opposed to this? No way to sign that. No, let's count the vote. David Roberts. Yes. Janie Mila. Yes. Robert Krause. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Kathy Griffith. Yes. Terry Kavner. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes, item uh, passes, excuse me. <clears throat> item number six is considered the final plat for Rock Creek, section six, located in the northeast quarter of section 19, township 10 north, range two west, being south of southeast 4th street, and west of Sunny Lane Road. Application by r, &R Land Development, LLC, Rocky Clark. Planning Commission recommended approval of this item, six to zero. This is in Ward 1. Mayor and Council, this uh, final plat consists of 80 single family residential lots on 21 acres. This does result in a density of just under four lots per acre. Uh, this section of Rock Creek is located south of Rock Creek Section 5 and east of Rock Creek Section 4. Uh, this is west of the Sunny Lane Business Park. Water and sanitary sewer are available to the site. Uh, a sanitary lift station is proposed to sewer the southeasterly portion of the property. There is no floodplain located on site and detention will be provided. Access is proposed from a local residential street, Southeast 8th Street, as plotted in the Rock Creek Section 5 edition. Uh, the applicant does have several vacant lots under his ownership and they will be used to construct a street stub to access this addition. An emergency access road is proposed accessing Sunny Lane through the existing Sunny Lane Business Park. A street stub is provided to the vacant tract of land to the south of this property. Uh, this is known as the Urbanski property. Uh, the street stub is to provide for increased access uh, whenever the Urbanski property does develop. The applicant is proposing to include buffering from the residential addition to the uh, heavy commercial park to the east. This will be comprised of a site proof fence and landscaping along the eastern right of way of what is shown as Daytona Lane. Uh, staff recommends approval of this final plot. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Now, just to clarify, this is the same property that had talked about being a um, senior citizen project correct and okay. he came back to um, right. make it single family and this is um, very similar practically identical to the lots that are in the previous sections of Rock Creek edition that was my next question because that's what we told the residents so we, that's what we would approve okay. now, Elizabeth how many homes is it uh, it is 80, 80 single homes. family uh, homes on 21 acres I make a motion or is it was there anybody signed up to approve or is there anyone signed up or would like to speak against this project no no one signed up okay we do well then i make a motion to approve all right thank you second thank you any other discussion on this one no which copy of it, please. janie milo yes robert kraus yes jason blair yes kathy <clears throat> griffith yes terry kavner yes david roberts yes Glenn Lewis. Yes, item carries. Item number seven is considered more vision 2020 comprehensive plan amendment number 29 located in the southeast quarter of section seven township 10 north range two west being north of northeast 12th street and west of sunny lane road from rural residential to low density residential application by Justin Rhodes Homes 
Uh, Planning Commission recommended approval of this five to one. This is in Ward Two. Mayor Council, items number seven, eight, and nine on your agenda are all companion items. Uh, you may recall that this, all of these items, um, came under consideration originally at the February 14th Planning Commission meeting. Uh, it then came to March the 5th uh, City Council meeting with a recommendation of denial from the Planning Commission. And uh, during that time, the applicant made some changes or revisions to the final plat to address some of the concerns that the residents had. Uh, and the City Council did decide to send it back to the Planning Commission for further consideration, uh, given the revisions. Uh, so uh, that's what we are hearing today. Uh, this property is located on the north side of Northeast 12th Street. It's between Bryant Avenue and Sunny Lane. The applicant is pro proposing to develop a single family residential addition on 80 acres. Uh, it is approximately 2.5 lots <laughs> per acre. The concept includes common areas, a detention retention pond, and clubhouse for the residents to use. Both water and sewer will be extended through the site on Northeast 12th Street. Uh, the developer will be providing a lift station uh, for sanitary sewer. Access is provided by Northeast 12th Street. It's a rural arterial roadway. Uh, it will have two entrances. A floodplain is located on the northwestern portion of the property. The developer proposes to leave this area in its natural form as a common area. Uh, it's also to act as a natural bus buffer uh, between the, uh, this property and the properties to the west and north. Uh, the property is currently designated in the Moore Vision 2020 as rural residential. R1 uses are considered to be low density residential in nature and an amendment to the Moore Vision 2020 is required. Uh, it should be noted that since the first Planning Commission meeting on February 14th, uh, the applicant has revised his plat to reduce the overall densities in the development. Uh, the revised plat takes into consideration many of the concerns that were addressed by concerned citizens who came to both the Planning Commission meeting and the City Council meeting on March 5th. Uh, these are going to be the overall densities of the plat um, have been reduced from 265 homes to 215 homes. Uh, that's going to reduce the densities of the addition from 4 units an acre to 2.5 units an acre. Uh, he decreased the number of lots abutting the Lost Creek addition from 20 lots to 16. Uh, the remaining lots are heavily wooded in the rear between the Lost Creek addition and this addition. And the interior streets were revised to show greater <coughs> connectivity throughout the addition and this does satisfy the more fire marshal and EOC director requirements. Uh, the growth trend of Moore has been predominantly eastward. Moore Vision 2020 understands that as the city grows, and utility services are made available. The land use designation and the corresponding zoning can be reconsidered by the Planning Commission and City Council and amended as necessary. Uh, this is just such a case. Uh, to the east of this property, um, the property is zoned R2, uh, which does support duplex uh, development without City Council approval. Uh, to the west of this property is the Lost Creek addition, which is zoned as R1. And this is the exact identical zoning to which this request is being made tonight. Uh, there were four property owners at the last Planning Commission meeting. Uh, they uh, continued to express concerns regarding uh, the densities being too high. Uh, they expressed concerns about an increase in traffic um, and a decrease in their property values and overcrowding at the local schools. Uh, the applicant has made changes to the plat uh, to specifically address these items, uh, which is what you're hearing today, the 215 lots. Um, he has made these changes to decrease the densities and to increase the open space. Um, this is done directly to address the citizens' concerns. Uh, the Planning Commission, um, after hearing his revised uh, application, did uh, recommend approval at the last meeting at a vote of six to one. If you have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them. I have one. Um, what is it that defines rural residential? How many lots per acre? Rural we, 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 we all had this discussion before. Sure. Uh, uh, rural residential is defined in the Moore Vision 2020 as A1, um, A2. So you're really looking at uh, an RE. So anything from three quarters of an acre on up to, you know, a1 is 
however many acres you can get. Um, so that's what the definition of rural residential would be. So it's three quarters of an acre or larger, basically? Correct, yes. Okay. All right. Okay, do we have a motion on this item? Is there any protest to this? Oh, anyone want to speak? There's no one signed up. If you would state your name and address for the record, yeah. please. David Box, 522 Call 4 Drive. And I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Justin Rose. And just to touch on a few points that, that Elizabeth mentioned. Um, the first time we were at the Planning Commission, there was a, a great deal of concern uh, by the neighbors, mostly from the, from the west. Uh, there was a handful of people from the east as well. Uh, and since that time, we've now dropped 50 lots, and we're now down to 215 lots, which is only two and a half units an acre. Um, there was a gentleman to the west that initially was uh, against the application, and with our new revision, he is now in support of the application and uh, has withdrawn his protest. Um, the gentleman to the east uh, was not at the Planning Commission hearing, and there were a few people from the Lost Creek edition, and that's uh, the packet I handed out. I want to just touch on a few points. Starting on page three, these are a series of pictures that I took uh, from the Lost Creek edition. And as you can see, this is what, from, from the Lost Creek edition, looking back to the east where our development will be, uh, what you see. And there's a significant tree line that will be preserved uh, that will provide a, a great buffer to that addition. Um, that addition is zoned single family, which is exactly what we're asking for. Uh, we're actually less dense than the addition to the east and the addition to the south. So we feel at two and a half units an acre, we have a very low, densely, low density uh, single family subdivision that is appropriate for the area. Um, and with that, I answer any questions that the council would have. I just appreciate this being sent back to the Planning Commission and taking a second look at it. Um, I don't have an issue at all with this development. Looks like a nice development. Yeah. I'll make a motion we approve. Second. Uh, thank you. Did, did anyone, there's no one sign up to speak against it. Anyone want to sign up or anyone want to speak against it? I didn't ask. So. Okay. We have a motion and a second. <coughs> Would you call for the vote, please? Robert Krauss. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Kathy Griffith. Yes. Terry Kavner. Yes. David Robert. Yes. Janie Milo. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. Item carries. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Item number eight is considered rezoning application number 882 located in the southeast quarter of section seven, township 10 north, range two west, being north of northeast 12th street and west of Sunny Lane Road from 82 rural agricultural district to R1 single family residential district and approve ordinance number 71011 Application by Justin Rhodes Homes, uh, Justin Rhodes Planning Commission recommend, recommended approval of this item five to one. Make a motion to approve. All right, thank you very much. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, would you call for the vote, please? Jason Blair. Yes. <coughs> Kathy Griffith. Yes. Terry Kavner. Yes. David Roberts. Yes. Janie Milo. Yes. Robert Krauss. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes, item carries. Item number nine is a companion item with the same thing. <clears throat> Consider preliminary plat for uh, Sonoma Lakes Edition located in the southeast quarter of Section 7, Township 10 North, Range 2 West, <clears throat> being north of Northeast 12th Street and west of Sunning Lane, Lane Road. Application by Justin Rhodes Homes. Justin Rhodes Planning Commission recommended approval of this item 5 to 1 as well. Make a motion to approve. Thank you. <clears throat> Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? If not, would you call for the vote, please? Kathy Griffith. Yes. Terry Kavner. Yes. David Roberts. Yes. Janie Milo. Yes. Robert Krause. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. Item carries. Thank you. Item number 10 is consider awarding bid number 112-011, temporary employee services to standby services, LLC. 
Uh, Mayor, Council, this is what we do yearly. We request bids for our temporary services, temporary help to help us with our mowing and stuff. Uh, this year, uh, standby services come in with the uh, lowest bid at $11.18 per hour. The company we use right now is uh, First Staffing Group. They came in at $11.52 per hour. I don't have any reason not to accept uh, the lowest bid. Uh, however, I think there is someone here that I want to talk about that. So. Yeah, he signed up, or she signed up, Kathy Siders. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my understanding is the standby did come in at a lower rate but if you do a comparison apples to apples, they're paying 75 cents less per hour to the employee that's out there doing the mowing and the weed eating and the trash pickup and working at the animal shelter. So at a minimum wage, they're asking someone to get out there in 106 degree weather and work. We pay $8 per hour for the laborer and that's why we came in at 34 cents difference. So there's a difference. If you want to compare apples to apples, our bid is lower if you take the markup. We have a 1.44 markup where they came in at 1.54 thereabouts. I just wanted to point out those differences and let you know that where we have been providing the services um, for the last couple of years. And I wanted to let that now, does anybody have any questions? I think it's important that, yeah, the, there's an 1118 rate and it's lower for the city, but overall, the quality we pay weekly, we don't pay daily or next day. I think there's some merit to what this lady has said as far as pay to these employees, it's beneficial and cost saving to us. If we get some people who will stay with us, who learn the job, and you're not, you know, just weekly retraining a new employee. But I don't, Richard, I assume we've got a good track record with this company. I'm yes. not. But my, my we have employees out that have been there for a couple of years and over, and they're really liked, and others change from time to time. I can't guarantee you're going to have the same people forever and ever, but we do have long-term employees that have been on the job. Yes. Can you do this? That's my next question is to Randy. Randy, it's the best bid, right? Lowest and best? Yes, So we, we could pick either one, right? Yes, sir. Justify. Well, we get sued. If we just, justify for instance as to why you would go with a higher, uh, okay. a higher bid. Do, do we have any information on the uh, company with a low bid? Um, we have used them before. It's been, uh, I think, it's before. Uh, you got about three years. We you know, had it for about three years. Ago. Ago. I think we used them for a couple of years in a row. The only reason our bid went up was because of the unemployment over the last couple of years and insurance costs. It's just a matter of figuring it. But we do have a lower markup, the 1.44 markup. I don't think we've had as many problems the last couple of years with the mowers, have we? No, but another option, we could we could take the low bid, and if it doesn't work, then we can make the change, if y'all feel well, I, will, I will tell you that the employees that I have placed now have voiced the concern that they cannot go from $8 an hour to $7.25 an hour. They would have to leave and find a, a job somewhere else. Just because, well, I mean, 75 cents an hour is a lot to ask someone to sure. To cut, you know. I, I think this council's always prided itself on taking care of its employees as best we can. And I think we'd be doing a disservice to the employees if we took less money or paid them less money for the same work that we've been paying for. So that's my opinion. And I, I know in the past when these guys get paid cash the next day, the next day they don't show up. Mm -hmm. Now that looks like it comes a lot <laughs> so especially when it's, it's 102 out in the summertime and they're supposed to show up to mow and they don't show up right. to mow so and it's like where you at i'm sick or well, whatever it's like i quit we've seen that a lot too. in today's Plus, society it's tough to find laborers who want to do this type of work we're struggling now with permanent 
employees in those in parks maintenance and yeah. public work. As long as we can do it legally, I don't have a problem staying with them. We can do it. Okay, want to make that in the motion. Are we, and we're comfortable we can do that. Yeah, Randy said we could. It's on Randy. He's the one getting sued, not us. Right? I just want to <laughs> How do you want to see it one more time? No, it is, it is possible. If you place your reasons as to why you're not going with the absolute lowest bid, right. uh, place those in your motion as to why you would be going with the next highest amount or third highest amount, whichever one is chosen, you can select from the uh, lowest and most responsible I like, the word, I like the word responsible. Mm -hmm. Is this the second highest or the yes. second lowest, I guess? We were second. Okay. Well, I'd make a motion. I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you have to? Okay, I was going to make a motion to go with uh, the second lowest bid, as I believe it will provide better services and be a more responsible company to meet our needs. Okay, thank you. I'll second. All right, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Thank you very much. Terry Kavner? Yes. David Roberts? Yes. Janie Milo? Yes. Robert Krause? Yes. Jason Blair? <coughs> yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm covered right, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I lost my spot. Hold on. Item number 11 is consider awarding bid number 112-010. Uh, landscape maintenance for Riverwalk area and Old Town to Todd's lawns and landscape in the monthly amount of nine hundred sixty-five dollars. You going to do this? <laughs> Two D's and Todd, just for the record. Okay. This is one D. All right. I have the correct spellings. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, this item is for the landscaping of Broadway in the Old Town area from Northeast Third to Southeast Third and along the Riverwalk Channel from McAllister's Deli roughly to uh, Alfredo's. We had a mandatory pre-bid uh, February 28th. We had three uh, contractors there. We received one bid uh, in the amount of $965 a month. Uh, it's a one-year contract. This is about $350 cheaper than our current contractor. Uh, we checked references for Todd's Lawn and Landscape. The, the references were great, so we expect really good things from, uh, from the contractor. Um, and we'd recommend uh, approval or acceptance of the, of the bid, please. I'll be happy to take any questions. The last guys last year set the bar pretty high on this. They did a good job. So. Make a motion to approve. <coughs> All right, thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, would you call for the vote, please? David Roberts? <coughs> yes. Janie Milo? Yes. Robert Krause? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Terry Kavner? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number 12 is considered awarding geo bond issue project number four at Northwest 12th Street between Janeway Avenue and West I-35 service road to the lowest and most responsible bidder. Mayor and Council, this is our fourth geo bond project. It's from I-35 to Janeway. The existing four lane will tear out and rebuild with five lane, re-signalize City Avenue and realign that intersection where it's offset to the north. And we had a good turnout at the pre-bid. We did receive seven bids on this project, and staff recommends the bid be awarded to ATEC. And we would take, also recommend we take the base bid, which is concrete, and it's for $1,848,000. $1,848,000. $1, there was only $15,000 difference between the asphalt and the concrete, and that's the reason we recommend the concrete. Mm -hmm. yeah. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them. And we will not start this project until we get Northwest 5th Street there <laughs> in front of, yeah. from Telephone Road to Thanks. Yeah. Janeway. That's a good idea. From where it's flowing. Really. We really mean it too. I'll make a motion to go with ATEC with the right. concrete base. Second. Thank you. Thank you both. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Have we used them before? No, we have not, but uh, we have. Uh, Tim Johnson was.
with Johnson and Associates, who was the design engineer on this project. Met with the principal in this company last week, and then he submitted references. And I called one engineering firm who had done work with the city of Moore on a previous project. And then I called the uh, public works director of the city of Norman and got rave reviews. They're a smaller company. This is a bigger project than they normally do. But we've been there with other companies and we've been successful taking smaller companies. So, and I mean, it wasn't just a recommendation. It was a strong recommendation. So we feel comfortable with ATEC. Good. All right. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Janie Mila. Yes. Robert Krauss. Yes. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. <coughs> Kathy Griffith. Yes. Terry Kavner. Yes. David Roberts. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. Item carries. At this time, we'll recess the city council meeting and convene the more public works authority meeting. Item number 13 is the consent docket. <clears throat> to me. Item A is receive and approve the minutes of the regular more public works authority meeting held March 19, 2012. Item B is approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2011-2012 in the amount of $1,400,362.15. Make a motion to approve. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Second. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? Everybody get their claims, ex uh, ans <clears throat> claims questions answered or any changes or notes to the minutes? If not, we have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Robert Krauss? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Terry Kavner? Yes. David Roberts? Yes. Jane Milo? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. At this time, we'll recess the more Public Works Authority meeting and convene the more Risk Management meeting. Item 14 is the consent docket. Item A is accept the minutes of the regular Moore Risk Management meeting held March 19, 2012. Item B is approved payment of a workers' compensation settlement in the amount of $7,500 to Carla Farmer for claim number 2010-13865Y and 2011-7422R. Uh, item C is approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2011-2012 in the amount of $337,421.65. Make a motion to approve. All right. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, any other uh, notes or changes to the minutes or any claims questions that you didn't get answered before? <clears throat> Not we have a motion and a second. Let's call for the vote, please. Jason Blair. Yes. Kathy Griffith. Yes. Terry Kavner. Yes. David Roberts. Yes. Jane Milo. Yes. Robert Krause. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. Item carries. At this time, we'll recess the more risk management meeting and reconvene the city council meeting. Item number 15 is new business citizens forum for items not on the agenda is item A. There's no one signed up. Would anyone like to speak? Okay. Item B is items from the city council or trustees. Okay. Um, uh, Janie, um, I understand this is going to be your last meeting. And uh, we didn't get the plaque in in time. <laughs> but we do have a couple little things for you. On behalf of the city council, I just want to say thank you. Get that hundred dollars a month. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna lose that hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to do it Well, it's been an honor and a privilege, and I certainly have a lot of respect for the people sitting around this table as well as the city staff. You are amazing people, and I have a lot of confidence in you, and I have trust that you will continue to make this city the best that it can be, and you will uh, do what is expected of you. And I appreciate working with you for the past few years, and and we'll miss seeing you. 
Well, we but I'll still it. be around. I'm still very active in the community, and there's a lot of things that, it, that I'm planning to continue to uh, do. There's, there's lots of stuff to do. We know that. That's right. So we do appreciate you. Thank you very much. I Thank appreciate you. it. Any items from the city manager, trust manager? Just a few announcements. Uh, the more beautiful tree sale will be April the 20th at the community center. The Arbor Gardens, which some people know as the Arboretum, if the weather cooperates, we'll have a parking lot there this week and the public will be able to access that park. That's long overdue, but, and it really turned out to be a beautiful addition to our park system. And I would urge all citizens to bear with us and be patient in these construction zones. We know it's an inconvenience and we don't like it any less than you do, but we had a construction worker hit by a vehicle today over on Northwest 5th Street. And please, please be patient. And we do our best to move the traffic, but to build a roadway, sometimes there, there has to be inconveniences. So just be patient and bear with us and think when it's done, how nice it will be. And that's all I have there. Okay. Item 16 is adjourned. So moved. All right. Second. Thank you, Thank you both. Mr. Coffee, please. Kathy Griffith. Yes. Terry Kavner. Yes. David Roberts. Yes. Janie Mila. Yes. Robert Krause. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you.